We'll begin the Gemara today, six lines from the bottom of Dafai and Dalad Amit Beis. We're right in the middle of a sugya. This uh, Gemara here is talking about the halachas of Truma. It went back on the mission where it said that a person that's Tomei can't eat Truma. It brought the sources from the Psukim for this. And the particular Allah regarding a person that's Tommy, that he can't eat Truma, is that he has to wait <coughs> until he goes to the mikveh and then also had of Shemesh until sundown. That's by Truma. Now, here in this part of the Gemara, it was speaking about the Psukim that it says in the Parsha of Ayeldis. Ayeldis is also Tommy, and she has to um, wait until she goes to the mikveh and then afterwards she, uh, till sundown, and then she's able to eat the Truma. So the Gemara explained how the Psukim over there is speaking about Truma by the Yildis. So now the Gemara has a question on this, that L'chayre, if you look there in the Parsha, it can't be speaking about a woman that's eating Truma. Why not? So Rav Sheish Ravidi asks on this, How could you say that the Psukim in that Parsha of the Yildis speaks about a woman that she's going to become pure in order to be able to eat Truma? But Vatanya, we learned in Abraisa regarding that Parsha, it says, it opened, the parasha opens, it says, Daber al Bnei Yisrael, speak to the Eden about the halachas of the Tuma of a Yildis. So, Ein Liyel Bnei Yisrael, I would only know that these halachas apply to a Bnei Yisrael, to someone that's born a Yid. Giyeres, v'shifcha mishukhreres minayin. How do I know that a woman that converted, or she was freed from being a maid, so she's also converted to, to become a full Yid, how do I know that to her, these halachas apply as well? Tambud loyma isha. The Pasuk over there begins, Isha ki Sazriya, it says, a woman. So this includes not only a, a Bas Yisrael, that was born a Bas Yisrael, but any woman that's now a Yid. So the Pasuk is not talking only about a Yid that was born a Yid, but it's talking even about a Giyayres and a Shifcha. So now if you think this Pasuk is talking about Trume, Giyayres ve Shifcha, Benois, Meichel, Trume, Ninu, or is a Giyayres Shifcha in any way possible for her to be, to be eating Trume? A Bas Kayin can eat Trume, even a Bas Yisrael that's married to a Kayin can eat Trume, but a Giyayris and a Shifcha can't get married to a Kayin. So how, when, when is a Giyayris and a Shifcha eating Trume? So Rav says, You can't say that this Pasha is speaking about Trume, even if it's true that in the beginning of the Pasha, there's a word that says that it's speaking about a Giyayris and a Shifcha. But there's another Pasuk in that Pasha where it says, Bechol Kaydesh lo Siga that she should not touch Kaidish. Now, what is this referring to? And the, we learn from this that Larabai Satruma, that it's coming to teach me regarding Truma, that in those days, in the, the first days from after she has a baby, whether the first 33 days or the first 66 days, depends if she has a Zohar and a Keva. So in that time period, it says that she shouldn't eat Truma. That's what the Gemara Dash is from that Pasik. So we see, without the pshat that we said before, that when it says, Ad Moloisi Mei Tara, the other psukim that the Gemara brought before, that we said that it's talking about Truma, we know anyways that it says clearly, Bechol Kaidesh, that Bechol Kaidesh Siga, and that refers to Truma. So we see that this pasuk is talking about Truma regardless. Ela, so the, the explanation here is, Kra, the psukim over here regarding this woman that gives birth, Mili, Mili, Kachashif. There are different things in different psukim of this pasha that he tells you about. Not every pasuk has to be speaking about the same woman. Isha, in the beginning of the parasha, includes even a Giyayres and a Shifcha Meshachreres. Later in the parasha, it speaks about the halachas of Trume that apply only to Abbas Yisrael or Abbas Kain and not to a Giyayres. It's different, different psukim, different subjects, different things about a Yeldis. It's not a contradiction. Right, the Gemara comes back now and concludes the Indian regarding Trume. Again, what we're dealing with is the halacha of Trume. That if a person is Tomei, a Kayan is Tomei, he can't eat Truma until Har of Shemesh. After he went to the mikveh, he has to wait until sundown. So there's three psukim that we quoted before that you find in the Torah regarding Truma. And the Gemara will explain why we need all three psukim. So now based on the psukim we brought before, Tlasa Kroi Betruma. So three psukim that speak about this regarding Truma Lamali. Why do I need all these three, these three psukim? Rashi brings again the psukim. One psukim is Bekotchim La Yechal Adash Yitar. And we said before it goes in Truma. And the other Pasuk is, Uvo Hashemesh V'toher, you have to wait until sundown, and then you're pure. And the third Pasuk is, Ad Mlois Yimei Tara, till the days, this is by the woman that gives birth, until the days of her Tara, till the days just to wait until she's pure, then she can eat from the Truma. So what do I need all these three Psukim for? Says the Gemara, Tzrichi, I need them all. The Ima Ad Yitar, if only I would have the first Pasuk, Ad Yitar, I would have a Yedayne, B'mai, B'mai. Pasuk says, until she becomes pure, or until he becomes pure. I wouldn't know how, until, until you become pure with what? So therefore, cost of Rahmane, Ova Shemesh Vitar. So that's why we have the other Pasuk that says, it's not enough that you go to the mikveh, but you also have to wait until sundown. 
Because the Rahman of Vashemesh of the Taira would only say that you have to wait until sundown. So I would say, Hanimili, the Lav Barkapada. That may only be true in a case where you don't have a tumma that also requires a carbon. Then you can wait until sundown. But if you have to wait, but if you are tome with something which requires a carbon, say maybe I would say only until you bring your carbon, only then when you bring your carbon could you eat from the truma. So therefore, cost of Rahmana, so therefore the Taita writes by a Yeldis, which is a woman that has to bring a carbon, Admalois, that she waits until the days of her tara are up. And this is whether it's it's 80 days or um, or 40 days, this is, depends if it's a Zohar or a Keva, and then she can go to the mikveh and eat from, from the Truma without bringing the carbon. But we of Rahmana Ad Malois, if we would only say this Pasuk of Ad Malois, he may taught until those days are filled or ended. Have a I would think, maybe when those days come to an end and she's able to now go to the mikveh, but she doesn't even have to wait to go to the mikveh in order to eat the Truma. Therefore, it says the Pasik, you purify yourself, which means that you go to the mikveh. So that's why you need all these three psukim. So together, it clarifies that in order to be able to eat trume, the only thing that's necessary is to go to the mikveh and then wait until the sun comes down, but not to bring the carbon in order to be allowed to eat trume. So this is all the explanation of these psukim, and specifically the Pasik of Lo um, Yoichal Adashayitr. Again, that Pasuk there. What's the beginning of that Pasuk? Just because Gemara is going to continue now on that Pasuk, so it's important to know what that Pasuk is. So it was quoted on the Ayn Dalet Amir Aleph. So the, the beginning of that Pasuk is, Ish, Ish, Mizera Aarain, Fuhud, Sarua, Izov, Bakotchem, Lo Yoichal, Ada Sheyitar. That was the Pasuk. And that's, even though it says in the Pasuk, Kotchem, the Gemara said before that it's not speaking about kachim, it's speaking about trume that could be eaten by any of Zera Arain. And over there it's saying that you shouldn't eat trume ada sheyitar, and we, we interpret that to mean until Har of Shemesh. Okay, but now the Gemara is going to bring uh, another opinion that argues on the Pshat of that Pasik. Now there's another Tana that argues on the Pshat of that Pasik, and it's not speaking about trume. Taught by Rabbi Shmuel because we learned by the by Rabbi Shmuel that he said the Amar bezav bal gimel riyos when that pasuk says ish ish mizer aram with sarua oizav what kind of a zav is it speaking about? It's speaking about a zav that had three emissions. What's the halach of a zav that had three riyos? He has to bring a carbon. It's not enough for him to go to the mikveh. It's speaking about a person that does have to bring a carbon. And it's not only speaking about a Metzayda. Before the Gemara said we were speaking about a Zav that only had two Riyas. And the Gemara said we're speaking about a Metzayda that was locked in order to determine whether he has a, a Tzaras or not. But here he taught that when it says that he's a Tzarua, it means a Metzayda Mokhlat. That he was already sent out of the Machni. He was, the, he was confirmed as a Metzayda. That's what the Pasuk is speaking about. So v'hai ad according to this Pshat, when it says until he becomes pure, what does it mean? Ad kapara. Pure means not when he goes to the mikveh and the sun comes down, but it means until after he brings his carbon. Because these are two individuals that have to bring a carbon. So now according to his, his pshat, it would come out that this pasik is not speaking about trome, this pasik is actually speaking about kochem. Because by trome, you can't say that you have to wait until you bring a carbon. Because even he agrees, you have other psukim that clearly say that by trome you only wait until sundown. So according to this pshat, this pasik is speaking about kochem. So if so, trei kroi bekachim lomali. So now if so, I have two different psukim regarding kachim. Why do I need two psukim of kachim? What are the two psukim I have by, uh, for kachim? One is this pasik of Ada Sheyitar, which according to Rabbi Shmuel speaks about kachim. And then the pasik that it says, v'chiper alel v'tahera, by the woman, where it says that, sh- that the, the, the carbon atones for her. And then she's tired, which is also speaking about kachim. That after she brings the carbon, then she can eat from kachim. So why do I need two psukim to tell me that in order to be allowed to eat kachim, it's not enough that you went to the mikveh and the sun came down, but you also have to bring a carbon. See, so the other time, the time the whole bit it talks about trumen. Right. It talks about kachim. Correct, exactly. So now the Gemara wants to know, why do we need two psukim for kachim? And says the Gemara, Tzrichi, we need these two psukim. So basically, the Gemara is going to point out the difference between these two psukim is, in the Pasik of Ada at the beginning of the Pasik was Tzaruah Zav. So the Gemara is going to focus on Zav. This is talking about the Tumah of a Zav. 
And the second pasuk, which, which, where it says, V'chipar alev v'tahedot, talking about the yildis, the woman that gave birth. So the Gemara explains as follows, Is kasarachmane be yildis, if I would say regarding a yildis, that she has to bring her carbon first to be allowed to eat kachim, I would say the reason is because there's a certain stringency by her. Yishum de tumasa, the days of her tumma last very long. Like I mentioned before, whether it's 80 days or, or, or uh, 40 days, I believe it is, when you get to the difference in a zakhar and a keva. So it's a, lo- a long period of time that she's tummy. So therefore there's an extra stringency by a yeldis as well, that she can't eat kachim until she brings a carbon. Avil bezav, but by a zav, with the days of the tum of a zav, are not nearly as long as this. It could be seven days that she has to, that a zav has to be pure. So a malay, so maybe here this stringency does not apply. On the other hand, because of Rahman Bizov, if the Taita would say this halacha, that you have to wait until you bring a carbon only by a zav, so then I would say there's actually a certain stringency that you find by a zav. What's that stringency? You never find by a zav the emission that the zav has that causes the tumah. There is no exception to this. Any emission that a zav has causes tumah. So that's a stringency. Avul yeldis, aim by a yeldis, there's a unique leniency that you find by a yeldis that there are certain days which are called the yimei tara, the dam toyar, which is the blood that she sees in those days, do not make her tummy. Like a nida or like a zav that makes her tummy, a zava that make her tummy, there are certain days after birth that do not make her tummy. So therefore, because there's an exception over here and a certain leniency, I would say maybe this Allah that you have to wait until after you bring a carbon to eat kachim, maybe that doesn't apply. Tzricha, that's why the Torah is telling me that it applies both by Azov and by a Yeldis. Okay, the Gemara finishes off now here. We're getting to the end of this whole sugya. There's one more Pasik, or actually there'll be two more, but there's another Pasik here where the Gemara brings that it's speaking about Truma. So before we said that there are three psukim, but there's actually a fourth pasuk that tells us the halacha regarding truma. Ba'mayim yuva v'tame, that if you have any kalim that became tame, so you have to put it in the mikveh, and until then it'll be tame, and, and v'tame yada erev, it'll actually, it'll be, but it remains tame until at night. So Rashi says, we know that this pasuk is talking about truma. How do we know? Because only by truma the halacha is that you have to wait until at night. When it's regarding Meiser, for example, you don't have to wait until at night. As soon as you put it into the mikveh, you can use it for Meiser. If we would be talking about Kachim, so you have to wait until after you bring a carbon. Or actually, a carbon doesn't really apply to this over here. I mean, this is we're talking about a keli. But because it's saying until you wait until at night, so we know it's talking about Truma. So we have another Pasik telling me that you have to wait until at night after you all go to the mikveh for, for Truma. And this is really, the Pasik there is actually talking about a keli, but the same also applies to a person as well. So Lamali, why do I need this Pasik? Amr Abzayda, Sar Abzayda said, Linigiyya. This Pasik is saying that, that until at night it's not, not allowed even to touch Truma. Not only are you not allowed to eat the Truma, but the Kali shouldn't touch the Truma. And the same with the person. Until at night you shouldn't even touch the Truma. And the Gemara brings where you see in a Braise that this Pasik is talking about Truma. So it says in this Pasik, Bamayim Yuva Vitome Ad Ha'orev. And then right, the, the, the last word in that postic is vitoher, and then it becomes pure. So when it says, so the Brisa says, when it says in the postic vitomei, so yochel akol, I would think that uh, until at night, after you, you tabled it already in the mikveh, it should be tomei for everything. It can't be used, not for trome, not for meiser, for nothing. Tamad loimar vitoher, but the postic says vitoher. What does vitoher mean? The simple pshat of vitoher actually means that only at night it becomes toher. But when you want to say something in the future tense, that it will become tired only at night, how would you, what's the usual Lashon that you use in future tense in Lashon Kaidish? You usually use the Yithar, it will, with a Yud in the beginning of the word. It will become tired. Vitair is a term that could also mean past tense. Tahir, that it was already tired before. Okay, so that's, so that it says that it's already tired even before sundown. But on the other hand, e vitoir, now that it says vitoir that it was already tired before sundown, yochalakol, you would think that once you tabled it in the mikveh, it's totally tired from before already. Tamad leim vitame. But on the other hand, the pasuk says vitame adarev, that it's tame until at night. So we have two different words here in the pasuk that seemingly are giving us two opposite messages. So how do I interpret this pasuk here? Kan lemaiser. When it says that it's already toy right after you brought it into the mikveh, that means for maiser. You can use these kalim for maiser. And kan truma. But when it comes to truma, you can't use it anymore. Sorry, you can't use it until at night, that is. And that's why it says v'tome. That's the shot on the pasuk. So I see here in this said that this pasuk is speaking about truma.
And it's, as the Gemara said before, it's coming to say that you can't even touch Truma to it as long as it's uh, uh, before sundown. Maybe I should reverse these halachas that we just said here. Maybe I'm more stringent for Meiser. That for Meiser you have to wait until sundown and not for Truma. Says the Gemara, no, it doesn't make sense. Mistavre, it's logical to say, Kehechi the Chamira Achila the Truma, Machila the Meiser. Just like when it comes to the halacha of eating truma, that eating truma is more stringent than the eating of meiser, that regarding dafka, regarding truma, there's a greater stringency regarding the eating it, that you can't eat the truma until, until it's uh, sundown. Hachanami, so so too, chamira negiyah the truma, menegiyah the meiser. So when it comes to being allowed to touch the, the keli, which is tomei, so it makes more sense to say that this chumre applies to truma, that you have to wait until sundown, and not regarding meiser, you don't have to wait until sundown. Now the Gemara says that actually this halacha that we just learned here from this new extra Pasik, that, that when something is tame or someone is tame, he's not allowed to touch the trume until sundown after he goes to the mikveh, you could learn this actually from yet another Pasik. So you learn this, you're not allowed to touch the trume when you tell me from this Pasik here. There's another Pasik where it says, You shouldn't touch Kaidesh. What is this Pasik talking about? Azhara lo'eichel. So, so this is a b'raisa actually, I mean, the Bach here is good, is the Tanya. This is what the b'raisa explains, when it says in the Pasuk, Bechol Kodesh Leisiga, it's telling you that you're not allowed to eat from this Truma. The Pasuk is speaking about Truma. Okay, so this is uh, one of the Psukim actually that we quoted before. Ad Moloisi Mei Torah, that went on Truma. So in this Pasuk it says that you should not touch the Truma when you're Tome. But the b'raisa says, Has Haro this Pasuk is actually giving you a warning not to eat, even though it uses the term Leisiga, but the main shot of this Pasuk is that you shouldn't eat it when you're Tomei. Why wouldn't I say like the simple shot of the Pasuk, that you shouldn't touch it? It says don't touch the Trume and don't enter into the base of Mikdash. So it's, we compare these two, Makish Kaidash Le Mikdash. I compare not eating from the Trumet to the Isser of not entering to the Beis Mikdash when you tell me. Ma Mikdash, Dovash Yesh Bein Natilas Neshama. Just like when it comes to entering into the Beis Mikdash. So a person that enters into the Beis Mikdash while he's Tomei, so he's Chayiv Misa. Rashi brings the Pasuk over here, that you um, Chayiv Kodes, I believe it is. Yeah. Nichrasaf, you enter when you tame. So Av Kaidesh, so too when it speaks about not eating trume when you tame. So Davashesh Penatilas Nashama. It's not talking about touching it, it's talking about eating it. Who's Chayev Misibide Shamayim? Only someone that eats from Truma when he's tame. So we know that the Pasik of Bukhal Kaidash Laisiga is speaking about eating. If you touch Truma when you're tame, so there's no there's no punishment of Natilis of Misa, of Natilis Nashama. Okay, so that's how we know that the Pasuk is really speaking about Achila of Truma. But now the, the Gemara says, but v'hai, the Afke Beloshin Negiyah. If it's speaking about not being allowed to eat it when you're Tomei, so why does it use the term of Loisiga? Why does it use the term of, of not to touch it? Hachikama Negiyah Kachila. Because the Pasuk is coming to tell you that there's also an Iser not to touch it, like there's an Iser not to eat from it. Even though the punishment of Kares and Misibidei Shemaim doesn't apply, but the Pasuk is also coming to say, that Nigiyah is compared to Achille and it's also for you to touch it when you're, when you're Tommy. That's another source for this, that a person that's Tommy is not allowed to touch Truma. Okay, this is the conclusion of the whole Sugiyah ben Nigiyah to Truma. Now, the Gemara goes to the next part of the Mishnah, which spoke about a Patsua Daka. An individual that uh, his reproductive organs are not in place, are not proper, and therefore he can't have children, and he's not allowed to marry into Klal Yisrael. So it said there that one of the things it said in the Mishnah is that a Bas Yisrael that's married to a Koyin, that's a Ptsua Daka, so she can't eat Truma. Because the halach is if you marry to someone that's possible for you, that, that, that you're not allowed to be married to, so that does not enable her to eat Truma. But the next thing the Mishnah said is, if she was married to her husband and he was not a Ptsua Daka, and he, beca he became a Ptsua Daka later, but he did not, she did not have relations with him after he became a Ptsua Daka, so then she could eat Truma. Says the Gemara, man tana, who is the Tana of our Mishnah here that is basically saying that Mishtameres libi psula, even though she's waiting to, to, 
to be with this person, which is possible for her. Dairaisa, and this is Absol Dairaisa, Achla, but she could still eat from uh, What this means is she's married to this kind, which is a Ptsuadaka. Even though she didn't have relations with him yet, but she's married to him. So she's sort of in waiting, anticipating to have relations with him, even though he's possible. And the Mishnah is saying that she could still eat Truma. Who is the Tana that holds this? Amar Abelaza, Sar Abelaza says, This actually goes back to a Machlaikis that we learned all the way back a long time ago here in the Mesechte. I think the first Mishnah where it began discussing these halachas of eating Truma. So there in that Mishnah, there was a Machlaikis regarding a woman that had an Edison. Edison with a kain that's, that's possible to her. It wasn't in the suin yet, but just Edison, and she's anticipating. She's waiting to get married to this kain that's possible to her. Does that possible her from eating truma? Or could she eat truma? So there was a machlaikis there between the Tanakama, which is Rab Meir, and Rab Lozan and Rab Shimon. Rab Lozan and Rab Shimon says she could eat truma. So just like over there, it says that if she's in the Edison to this kain that's, that's possible, she can eat truma. So the same thing over here. She's waiting, she's married to this kind, which is a Ptsua Daka. She can eat Truma if she never had relations with him yet. That's what uh, Rabbi Laza said. It's only according to Rabbi Laza and Rabbi Shimon that our Mishnah goes. Our Mishnah here could even follow the opinion of Rab Meir. And again, Rab Meir before said that if you're anticipating to be in a relation with a kind that's possible to you, you can't eat Truma. So this woman is anticipating to have a relation with her husband, which is a Pitsua Daka, she can't eat Truma. But he says, no, in our case it's different. Why? She was married to him before when he was not possible, and therefore. She already began eating truma because he's a Kayan. So once she began eating truma, the fact that now something happened to him, he became sick and he became a Petsua Daka, it doesn't change her status, her right to eat truma. Says the Gemara of Rabalaza, Rabalaza that does not agree to this idea here, is because she kvar achlo He He says you can't rely on the fact that she already ate truma before. Why not? If you're not going to say like I'm saying, that you don't say she already ate from before, so then say the same thing. A Basisra that's married to a Kayin, who makes Baila and her husband passes away and they have no children. Maybe she could, you should say that because she was once married before to a Kayin and she ate from and then, she should still eat from her because she already ate before, but we don't say that. Once her husband, the Kayan, passes away and they had no children, she can't eat Truma anymore. So the same thing over here, the fact that she was married to this Kayan and she was able to eat Truma, it does not in any way empower her to eat Truma after he becomes a Petsua Daka. <coughs> now, now he's puzzled to her. But Rabbi Yechenen, Rabbi Yechenen says, the proof that Rabbi Laza brings is not a proof. Why? Hasam Paka Kenyane. Over there he's speaking about a Basisro that was married to a Kayan and he, he died or he divorced her. So the Kenyan, the relation between them is over. So over there I say the fact that she was eating Truma till now is, is insignificant. But Hacha Leipaka Kenyane, here she's still married to him. He became a Petsua Daka, he became Pasal now, but she's still married to this Kayan. So therefore once she's eating Truma, Rabbi Yechenen says, everybody would agree that she could continue eating Truma. Ezel Petsua, then the Mishnah described who exactly is a Petsua Daka. The Gemara here is going to get into different details regarding how you define who is a Petsua Daka. We learned in Abraisa. Is that a Ptsua Daka? Who is a Ptsua Daka? Whether the Beitzim, the testicles, are injured or are um, wounded. And Vafila Achasman, even if only one of them. Vafila Nikfu, even if it was punctured. Vafila Nimoiku, even if it was decayed. Vafila Chasru, even if something is deficient. So this makes a person a Ptsua Daka. The point of a Ptsua Daka is someone that can't give birth. As we'll see later in the Gemara. So he said, I heard from the Chachamim when they were in Yavne. And there in Yavne, they used to sit in rows, like in the, the rows of a vineyard. So it was called Kerem Be'yavne. A person that's born just with one Be'yavne. Einel is Sris Chama. So he's called a Sris Chama, which means that Menashemayim, he can't have any children. And therefore, he's not possible for being a Petsua Daka. As we'll see soon in the Gemara, Petsua Daka is only possible if this is something that happened through Bidei Adam. Something that, are, that are happened, that are injury from, the, from here in the, in, in, the, in the person, something happened to him. But not if it came in Hashemayim. So, but he calls him, it's Sris Chama. A Sris is a, a person that can't give birth, uh, called a Sris Chama. Now, what is this, uh, the Kasha? And therefore, he's Kasha to get married to, into Klal Yisrael. But the Gemara asks on this expression, Sris Chama Sokedaitach, is he called a Sris Chama? What does Sris Chama mean? Sris Chama means that he got some kind of a fever or he got some kind of an illness. And the illness caused him now to be uh, infertile. 
That's what Srischama means. But over here you're saying this person was born with one bait set. That's not Srischama. Why are you using this term? Ella the Gemara says, you're right. Hareyu kis Srischama vikasha. Just like a person that, he, that, that through an illness, he now can't have any children. So he's still kosher to marry into Klal Yisrael. The same thing is also benigate to this person that's born with one bait set. So because it's the way he was born, so that's something that doesn't pass him from marrying into Klal Yisrael. Okay, now the Gemara goes back to what it mentioned in the Brais of Vinikiv, that if the Beit has a puncture in it, so then he can't give birth, so he can't marry into Klal Yisrael. Frek the Gemara, Vinikiv le Mailed, if there was a puncture, does that mean that he cannot give birth? But Vahahahu Gavre, there was an individual, the Salik le Dikla, he was climbing a palm tree. Vacharze Silu Beitzim, and he got a puncture from a, from a thorn in, in one of his Beitzim. Vinofik Meneke Chutta Mulga, the Mugla that is, and some pus came out. So we know that there was a puncture and va'ilid, and that same person later gave birth. So we see that this still allows the person to give birth. So the Gemara says about that story, no, it's not true because Hashalach Shmuel lekamei de Rav Shmuel sent to tell Rav Omalei told him, Tzeve Chazer Abonav, go and interrogate what's going on with these children here that were born ma'ayinheim. Whose children are they? Are, are they really this person's children or not? Lavdafki was able to give birth pachlal. So these children are Safik mamza. If a person becomes a Petsua Daka, meaning that he now he's, he's, he's infertile, but it happened Bidei Shemayim because of some kind of an illness, then Kosher. He could still marry into Klal Yisrael. Petsua Daka means only if the person himself does something to bring about this wound that he can't have children. Omar Rav, Rav says, you see this in the language of the Pasuk itself. The Karina, Haina the Karina on Petsua, the Lashon of the Pasuk is Petsua. V'loikirin ha-patsua. Ha-patsua would mean he was already patsua from before that the Eibishter made him patsua. Patsua mean that he was patsaya himself, that he injured himself, that now he can't have any children. It says in the Pasuk that a patsua daka can't marry into Klai Yisrael. And over there it also says, that a mamzer can't marry into Klai Yisrael. Ma'ala alam I'm just like a mamzer that's born is through an action of a person that he causes this. Avkam bidei yodam. So too regarding a patsua daka, he's only also to marry into Klai Yisrael if it's his action. So it's another source for this. Omar Rav, now Rav says regarding this Pasuk here, so what does the Pasuk say? You have a Petsua Daka, and then there's also a Krus Shofcha. These are three, actually the Gemara is going to divide this into three. There's a Petsua, there's a Daka, and there's a Krus Shofcha. These are three different scenarios of people that they can't have children, and all of them can't marry into Klai Yisrael. So the, the Gemara describes the different details here. Petsua Bekulon, Petsua which means a wound in any of the parts of the, of the, of the organ, that, uh, the reproductive organ, in any of the parts, it will uh, not allow him to marry into Klal Yisrael. And dach, dach means dach, which means it's crushed. Also kul on any of the parts. And krus, when it says krus shavcha, krus also means cut, it was severed. Also in any of the parts, he can't marry into Klal Yisrael. And the Braise, and, and the Rav that is explains. Ptsua bakulon, ben shenifza gid, whether the gid, the aver itself is, is, uh, is uh, wounded, ben shenifza beitzim, whether it's the beitzim that are wounded, ben shenifza chute beitzim, or there are other uh, uh, canal, canals of, of the beitzim where the zera is, whether that gets wounded, he can't marry, he can't marry to Klai Yisrael. And the same is with dach. Dach means crushed, bakulon, also in all these parts, ben shenifza gid, ben shenifza beitzim, ben shenifza chute beitzim. The same halacha applies. And karas, which means severed, is also bekulam. Ben shenich resagid, ben shenich resu beitzim, ben shenich resu chutei beitzim. Amalei ahumer rabbanan l'rove. One of the rabbanan asked the rove, Mimai dahai petsua daka baisem okim. How do you bechlal know that when it says in the Torah petsua daka, the literal translation of petsua means a wound, and daka means crushed. How do you know that it's referring to the reproductive organs, saying that a person that can't have children can't marry into Klal Yisrael? Maybe Petsua Daka is speaking about something else. Maybe if he has a wound or he's crushed in his head, maybe that he can't marry into Klai Yisrael. Or Malay, they can't be because Meduloi Mona Beit Deiris. Because it doesn't talk over here about other generations. It doesn't say about he can't marry into Klai Yisrael, what's with his children or his grandchildren. Could they marry into Klai Yisrael? Similar to what, what it says by a Mitzri and an Adoimi. Over there it talks about the children, the second and the third generation. So it's, so this teaches us, we're speaking about over there, that this person can't have children. So that's why it doesn't speak about the next generation. 
So as the Gemara notices, no raya at all. Vedilma, I don't mono Maybe the reason it doesn't talk about the next generation is the Iyu Huda Asa, because maybe only this person that has this wound can't marry into Klai Yisrael. Breyu Babre Kasha, but his son, his grandson is Kasha to marry into Klai Yisrael. That's why the Torah doesn't talk about the next generation. So the Gemara says, so the source is something else. Dumya the Kruz Shafcha, because when it says Petzua Daka, it says right afterwards, Kruz Shafcha. So we know that just like Kruz Shafcha, speaking about in that area where, where reproductive organs, so too, Benigay to Petzua Daka. Ma Kruz Shafcha Baisa Mokim, Af Hainami Baisa Mokim. But now the Gemara will say, the Kruz, how do we know that itself? A Kruz Shafcha Gufei, how do you know when it says Kruz, that there's a cut? Shafcha and it pours out. That's a literal translation. So how do you know How do you know that it's referring over here to the reproductive organs? Maybe the person got a cut in his lip and therefore the spittle from his mouth is, is pouring out. Says the Gemara, Shafcha Ksiv. It says in the Pasik, the word Shafcha, that it now pours out. And B'mokim Sheshoifech, which means that the, the cut is in the place where it pours out. The spit of a person's mouth does not pour out. When a person spits, the, the spit that goes out, it, it, is sort of, it goes further away from the person. It doesn't pour out right there. Whereas over here, we're talking about when a person gets a, a cut in that area, so then what comes out, pours out. So therefore, we know that it's talking about in that area. But maybe I would say that it's talking about a person's nose. A person's nose, it, it pours out. What comes out of the nose, does pour out. Says the Gemara, no, miksiv bishfaich. Does it say in the Pasuk bishfaich, which would mean cross, a person got a cut, he got a wound in his nose, which is an area where what comes out of the nose pours out. Not like the spittle that a person spits far away. It pours out. So if it would say cross bishfaich, that would mean a cut in your nose which pours out before you got the cut. That's what it would mean. It doesn't say that. Rather, what does it say? Kros shafcha, which means that the cut is now causing that it should begin pouring out. That's what the Pasuk says. So what does this mean? Mi shal yidei krise shafich. Only now through this cut, it's pouring out. But shaloy al yidei krise, but if you did not get this cut, eine shafich ele mekaleach. It does not pour out, rather it's mekaleach. Mekaleach means it goes further away. It, it, um, it, uh, and if a person does not have a cut in that area, so what comes out goes further away. But once you get a cut, then it pours out right there. So that means the cross caused that it should pour out. La hai, whereas when it comes to the nose of a person, the idividi shayfuchu, whether he got a wound in his nose, whether he did not get a wound in his nose, what comes out of the nose always comes out, it pours out in the same way. Masnita tane and Abraise, we learned that there's a different source that we know that this, this psukim, or Kruz Shafcha is speaking about that he can't have children now. Because Mamzer. So we compare the two similar to what we said before. Just like Mamzer, how do you get a child that's a Mamzer in a, in a forbidden relationship that's connected to Isa Mokim, that you have children? So too over here, the Kruz Shafcha or the Petsu Adaka is speaking about in that area. If there's a puncture and the puncture goes through and through, but the beginning of the puncture is in that area in the tip of the Ava, which is called Atare in that area, but when it comes out on the other side of the puncture, it's above that area of the Atare, further in of the Ava. So what's the Allah? Is this, is this going to pass all this person of being able to get married into the Kla Yisrael or not? So Rabchiye bar Abba lachshuri. Rabchiye bar Abba thought to be machshur this person because the issue of a puncture is really only in that area of that Torah, not lower down. So therefore, over here, the puncture on one side is beginning in that area, but it comes out on the other side, lower down. So it shouldn't be an issue. Amalei Rabasi. So Rabasi said, Hachi Amalei Yerushua ben Levi. A Torah kol shim akeves. If there's a puncture in that Torah, even though it's coming out on the other side, not in that Torah, it still is ma'akev. You can't get married in the Klal Yisrael. And the Mishnah said, more regarding defining this, that if from that atara, that part where the bris is, that's called atara, that if over there, if that was cut off, but there's any part of it that's still left, so then he's still kosher. Yosef Ravine, so Ravine was sitting becoming Bayele, and he had a question. The language of the Mishnah was, if there's a meloya chot, if there's just a, even a, a, 
hair's breadth or a, 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 a thread breadth that's left over from that Torah, you can still, he's still kosher. So this that it says in the Mishnah, Malaya Chutcha Amru, Al Pnei Kula, that means in the, in the entire area of, that, of the Aver has to be left at Malaya uh, Chut, or Al Pnei Ruba, only the majority of the Aver. Amalei Rava Teisva, Al Ravina, Malaya Chut Al Pnei Ruba, that has to be on the Rav of the Aver or Klape Reisha, and towards the tip of it. Amar Ravuna, Ravuna said, Kekulmus Kshayra. If he gets a cut, and the, and the cut of the aver is in such a way that it's made like a, like a kulmus, like a quill or like a pencil. Like when you sharpen a pencil, so what happens? You, you cut it on the sides and you sharpen it to a tip. If the person's aver is cut in such a way that now his aver is, is like, an, like a tip, like a pencil. Kshayra, he's still kosher, he can still have children. Kemarzev psula, but if it's the other way around, it's kemarzev, which the translation of marzev is a gutter, which means that it's cut on the inside, and, but there's like walls that are still around that are there, so then psula, then he's going to be posel. Why? So the Gemara says, hi, shalat be'avira, and v'hai le shalat be'avira. If there's a marzev, so what happens is, is there's ear that goes into that area and it doesn't allow the person to have children. The zera cannot properly uh, develop, so it doesn't allow him to have children. But if it comes to a tip, so then there's no avir that gets stuck on the inside over there in that area. So therefore, he can still have children, so he's kosher. Rav Chista, Rav Chista says in the reverse, Kemarzev Kshayra. If, there's, if it was cut on the inside, then it sort of still has walls around, like a gutter which has walls around, then he's going to be kosher. Kukom is psula, but if the aver is cut in such a way that it goes to a tip like a pencil, then it's going to be puzzle. Why? Because high gutted, the high lay gutted. The difference is gutted, that means rubbing. That if it, if, if it still has walls around it, so it's able to rub in the time of the relations of the husband and wife, so that causes the zera to come out stronger, and the high lay gutted. But if it comes to a tip, so then it doesn't rub properly, so the zera does not come out properly, you can't have children. Omar Rave, so Rave says, Kvosei de Ravuna Mistavra. It's more logical to say like what Ravuna said, that Hai Loi Shalit Be'avira, that in the case where it comes to a tip, there's no ear that gets stuck in that area to stop the Zera of developing properly. In Vahai Shalit Be'avira. And over here, when it's cut on the inside and there are still walls that are around, so there's ear that comes in, and that's a problem. And he says, the reason that Rav Chista said, what did he say? If the issue is because of the gridusa, the rubbing, when it, when, it, when it has walls on the outside, it rubs, and when it does not, it doesn't, that's not an issue. And he says a muscle of what you see regarding a barrel of water. You have a barrel of water and you put in a stopper. And when you have an opening like a, like a faucet at the bottom and you want the water to come out and you put in a stopper in this barrel of water, so you put in a stopper, that stopper is usually uh, more narrow at, the, at, at one edge and, and, and wider at the other edge. And you put it in and, and the way you, how you can get it in is only because it's narrow first and then it's wide and that's how you can fit it in and then it's, and it's able to do the job. And it able, it's able to rub properly against the walls of this barrel to stop the water from coming out. So therefore he says it's the same thing over here, even though if the aver is like a tip, it doesn't hold it back from, from the rubbing and therefore the zera will come out properly. It's not a problem. Whether the aver is affected that it was cut like a kolmes or like a marzev, either way kshayda. The question is, is that only when it's below that Torah, meaning in the area of that Torah itself we're speaking about, or further up, closer to the body of the person? Says the Gemara, it should be Pasha that this is only when this cut in this way is further up in that, from that Torah, closer to the body. Because if it's Lamata, lower in that Torah itself, I feel the Nami. That even if the whole entire gid was cut off, we said before, as long as there's a, a, a little part that's left, like a chut, it's still going to be kosher. So that's not even a question. That's what it said in the Mishnah. And the Gemara says, so why, why was Ravina clarifying this? Why was Ravina saying this here, Bechlal? He's has, he was asking a question about this. Ravina was just trying to say Ravina was just trying to say something which was a mistake in order to test Meremer to see if he'll chap the mistake over here. Interesting. Gemara now brings over here a story about this, two stories about these halachas of Psuadaka, Ha'u Ovde, Da'ave B'Masa Mechasya. There was a story with an individual in Masa Mechasya that he had this cut in the Ever, the Rashi says the cut was like a marzav, like a gutter, and Shafye. 
So what he did is he, he, he made the cut in a different way that it should be like a colmus in order for him to be able to have children and then he used to, to cash it, to claw Yisrael. Mar Baravashi, again, it goes together. Shafye Mar Baravashi. Mar Baravashi made it, cut it and he, he made it in such a way that it should be kekolmes v'achshere and he became now kosher. Ha'u of the da'ave b'pompedise. There was a case, a story in Pompedise. Uh, and what was the story there? This is a different scenario. Istatim gufse, the shikh v'zera. So the, the, the channel where the shikh v'zera comes out was closed off. V'apik b'mokim ketanim. And instead, the Sheikh Fazera would come out from the place where the urine usually comes out. So the, the, the Gemara actually says in B'chayris um, that even though it might seem like the Sheikh Fazera and the, and the Ketanim, the, the Meiraglayim, comes out from the same hole, but it does not. There's a tiny little wall in between and they don't come out exactly from the same place. But this person, it was, it was punctured, it all came out from the same place. Savarav Beve Barabai Lachshur, Beve Barabai thought to say he can still have children, he's still kosher. Um, Rav Papa, Rav Papa said regarding that psak, it's not true. And he said very, he said it's uh, sharp over here, Lashon on him. He said, Mishom the Asim Mimuloi, because you come from Muloi. What does Mimuloi mean? So Rashi says, a very tragic family. He came from the house of Eli. Now, oh, anyone that came from the house of Eli passed away young. There was a certain klala that was given to the children of Eli because they had behaved inappropriately. So because you came from that family, Amrisu, muli, uh, uh, amrisu Mili Mulisa. You're saying things that are not acceptable at all. And he said, if the Zed is coming out in its place and then it develops properly, he could have children. If it does not come out from its proper place, does not develop properly and he will not be able to have children, so he's going to be puzzled.